If you're thinking of starting a business and you want to make a social impact at the same time, what are your various options for integrating making a difference into your business model? That's what we'll talk about in this video. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Amber Melanie Smith, and I'm actually a nonprofit founder and executive director, but I make these videos here on YouTube all about helping people find their way to make a difference, whether that is through socially conscious business or starting a nonprofit or social enterprise or being a leader in their community, volunteering and more. I hope that you find this video useful and helpful to you and get your wheels turning. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Oh, and if you are thinking of going the nonprofit route instead of the business route, I do have some online trainings at my website, foundertofulltime.com, that might help you get started. Okay, so if you've watched my videos for a while, you know that I largely focus on the nonprofit side of things, but I've mentioned in several videos that starting a nonprofit is not always the best fit for everyone, and it's not the exclusive way, or sometimes even the best way, to make an impact in the world around you it really depends on what you're trying to do so um, I want to talk about today how sometimes starting a business can create just as much of a social impact as long as you are integrating those systems and ways to create impact in your business model and especially if you're getting started you can do that from the ground up so for those of you starting a business in this video i'm going to talk about ways you might integrate creating that social impact into your business model from the ground up i'm going to talk about the reasons why it's a good idea to have a social responsibility element in your business structure and i'll talk about some of the real life examples of how it is done so that you can think about what the best structure might be for you let's get right into that why component if you're watching this video, I would wager that you already believe that creating a social impact through your business or having a socially responsible business is a good idea. But let's recap some of the reasons why, the well-researched reasons why, so that you have that ammo in your back pocket for anyone who might be giving you some doubt. I'm gonna get this one out of the way first because it's obvious, but it's just the right thing to do for one. Um, Businesses who have a social impact goal are measuring their success by more than just profits. They're also measuring their success by how well they impact the community and the world around them. But if you're planning on having people on your team or hiring employees, it's also a great idea because the current and up and coming workforce made up of millennials and Gen Z uh, are looking to businesses to create a positive impact and are preferring in significant amounts to work for companies that are socially conscious and are making an impact. It's almost half of millennials and Gen Z who have reported that they are going to make choices about where they shop and where they work based on how socially conscious and socially responsible a business is. So if you wanna attract some talent to your business, you're gonna to want to make sure that it's making an impact beyond just profits. But speaking of profits, Studies have shown that businesses that incorporate social responsibility into their model can expect higher financial returns as well. That's because they can increase their sales and reduce employee turnover. People who work for a company, this is basically what I was just saying a minute ago, people who work for a company where they feel like they're making a difference and have purpose and it has meaning are gonna be less likely to leave. They're gonna be happier in their work. And sales increase for the same reason. People who align with the values of a company are gonna make purchase decisions based on those things too. And anecdotally, speaking from the nonprofit side of things, I can tell you that I've personally made choices to shop in different places based on my knowledge of their social responsibility. Um, and I can also say that these businesses, and if you're talking about small businesses in your local community especially, those businesses that are a more entrenched part of the local community are going to have more connections and a larger social network and that means a bigger customer base too so doing good can uh, help you do well and they don't have to be mutually exclusive 
Okay, let's talk about some potential business models for integrating social impact into your business. I'm gonna talk about three in particular. The first is B corporations, the second is social enterprise organizations, and the third is a traditional business structure that has built-in social responsibility programming. Let's talk about B corporations first, or benefit corporations. So these are businesses, they're private or for-profit businesses that have to take an assessment that measures um, their ethical operations and the positive impact they make on the world, especially in the areas of the environment and employee well-being. And businesses have to take this assessment uh, regularly in order to maintain their B Corporation status. But once they have it, that B Corporation badge on their website and on their branding materials can be a good signifier to the public that they're a company that really cares about their employees and the world around them. So how exactly do B Corporations make an impact through this model? Well, the assessment that they take requires them to meet high standards in order to pass. And in order to pass this assessment, they have to meet these standards in several different areas. This assessment requires them to prove their positive impact on the environment and nonprofits and causes around them. It requires them to demonstrate their commitment to employee welfare and well-being through things like fair compensation and benefits to the employees that will make sure that they're taken care of, etc. Um, it also requires a good deal of transparency. So the companies have to be legally structured in a way that makes sure they're accountable to all stakeholders, not just shareholders or people who are going to be making profits, but other stakeholders. And that can include the people that they serve, their customers customers, um, other employees, etc. And finally, they have to be sharing their impact and performance on all these measures publicly so that they're very transparent and accountable to the whole B Corporation network and the, the whole public in general. If you're thinking that you might want to pursue B Corporation status for your business, and by the way, you can get this status even if you already have an established business, you don't have to just be a startup in order to get it. Uh, the first thing I would recommend that you do is just go to bcorporation.net. They have all sorts of information about the assessment that they require companies to take and what other businesses are part of the B Corporation network around the world, et cetera. Let's bring this model to life with a real life example. So the example I'll share is Uncommon Goods. This is a business that um, you might think of it as like Etsy with a social good angle. So they allow you know artists and creatives and craft craft types to offer their goods on their website, and they have uh, various commitments and pledges that they've made to the environment and their workforce, etc. Um, for example, they opt for environmentally packaging material and all their shipping. They invite customers to choose charities that Uncommon Goods will donate their money to. Um, they donate funds to scholarship funds and they ensure that their lowest paid worker is making at least double the federal minimum wage in the United States. So these are some of the tangible examples of how they are upholding their B Corporation status and their social impact goals. If you haven't heard of them, uh, a couple other real life examples you can look up include Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream, of course, Athleta, and Coursera. Um, and there are so many more. If you just search for B Corporation examples on the internet, you'll, you'll find a bunch of them. And of course, there's a list of them on that bcorporation.net website I mentioned earlier too. The second business model I wanna talk about that would allow a for-profit business to incorporate social impact into its work is called a social enterprise. A social enterprise is an organization that uses traditional business strategies like sales, marketing, et cetera, but to address a social issue. You might think of it as a crossover or a combination of a for-profit business and a non-profit organization uh, in the sense that you've got your money-making avenues and then you have your social impact avenues. You're bringing them together in this case to form a social enterprise. Um, it's also important to note that 
the social enterprise refers to the model but not the legal structure you could be a social enterprise and be a nonprofit organization or you could be a social enterprise and be a for-profit organization but in this case because we're talking about business i'm going to focus on the for-profit side of social enterprise now how does social enterprise make an impact well it does because it's very services or offerings or products are things that tackle a social issue. So it's not like they're, you know, over here selling t-shirts randomly and then giving the money to something over here. It's the actual service itself is tackling an issue. Um, for example, offering vision treatments to people with visual impairments um, and charging a very affordable fee to get your costs covered so you're still a business and all that um or maybe having it on a pay what you can scale so that people can afford more are subsidizing those who can afford less etc so the services or products themselves are moving the needle on the social issue if you're thinking of getting started in social enterprise then the first thing you're going to want to think of is what social issue do you want to tackle because just like you would for a business, you're trying to solve a problem for a customer. And in this case, the customer is a population that is in need or the world itself. So what problem do you wanna solve for that population? Then of course, once you know the problem you wanna solve, really understanding your customer, what challenges they're facing in their lives, what gaps in services and products exist that are not meeting their needs currently, that's where your sweet spot of business ideas are gonna lie. Let's once again talk about a real life example to really paint a picture for you. One real life example is Biddy and Bo's Coffee. This is a coffee shop franchise. So it's a company um, that has locations all over the United States. And I love how they describe themselves. They describe themselves as a human rights movement disguised as a coffee shop. And what they do is they employ people uh, with intellectual and developmental disabilities in the coffee shops to provide meaningful work, of course, and fair compensation, but also create an environment of inclusion and kindness. So you can see through this very model, they're tackling the social issue that they identified, which is a lack of meaningful work and inclusion for this population. By actually employing this workforce they are tackling that issue and they happen to also be bringing in revenue through the coffee sales too the third model i want to talk about is of course a traditional for-profit private business that just has social responsibility programming built into its structure this can be a business of any size it can be a large corporation it can be a small business it can be a startup etc um, but the idea is that they are making time for and investing resources in socially responsible and social impact programming like giving programs employee volunteer programs etc so going further with some of those ways that these companies could integrate social impact into their existing operations we talked about um, giving your employees paid time off to volunteer so that's one way of demonstrating that you value volunteering is by letting employees do it for some number of hours on the clock. Um, donating a percent of your profits to charities in your community, um, creating partnerships with charities to provide free services like free truck deliveries or free space rentals, free food donations, free marketing on your website, etc. If you want to get started with this model, uh, you got to find your match first. So what I mean by that is consider what issue area is going to be the most logical fit for your business. You can, of course, pick any cause that you're interested in, but you might find that there's some logical um, fit with causes that align with your business. For example, if you are in the food industry, a restaurant or a grocery store, maybe your cause is food insecurity. You want people to eat, you know, that's, that's part of your business mission too. So you might partner with food insecurity, hunger organizations. Maybe you're a pet supply store. A logical fit then might be nonprofit animal rescue groups. So just thinking about what your fit could be and what issues you want to uplift as a business. Second, you want to really assess what you can offer as a business that will make an impact. Is it 
time? Is it visibility? Is it money? Is it goods and services? What is your business able to offer the charitable community or people in your community that makes sense for you and um, is feasible for your, your company? Next, you want to research local organizations that are tackling the issues that you've identified um, to see who might be a good logical fit for your business as a charitable partner, social impact partner, or a handful of partners. Um, if you're not sure where to start to find nonprofits in your community, you can check out your local volunteer center. They usually have a database of hundreds of causes in your community. You might also check out your local center for nonprofits, which will also have a um, list of nonprofits in your area. Chambers of Commerce might also be a good resource because I know nonprofits often join those alongside their business counterparts too. Finally, um, you want to make sure that you're building an authentic relationship with a nonprofit partner. Um, they're running an organization too, and so it has to be a good fit for both of you, not just one or the other of you. So really take some time to talk to them, identify their true needs, think through with them what challenges they have that your business might be able to help address, and that's how a true partnership is formed. Let's talk about a real life example now. Um, I recently found this one and I think it's super cool. It makes a lot of sense. Court Furniture, which sells a uh, home and some office furniture, teamed up with an organization called Move for Hunger. And the whole model of this Move for Hunger nonprofit is that they partner with um, businesses that own trucks and have delivery systems in place to move food to food pantries and food banks. So making getting food to where it needs to go way more efficient. So Court Furniture, of course, has trucks in its inventory and has delivery drivers and systems all worked out. So it seems like a really great fit between these two um, entities, this, this for-profit business Court Furniture and the nonprofit Move for Hunger. So that's just one example of how a business might use its existing assets and skills to meaningfully make a difference in the cause that it cares about. All right, what did you think? I hope that this got your wheels turning. Um, if you're starting a business, has this helped you come up with some ideas on how you might integrate social responsibility or philanthropy into your model and operations? Share what you're working on in the comments below. As I mentioned before, if you're going instead in the nonprofit direction, check out my website, foundertofulltime.com, where I have some trainings for people starting a nonprofit or developing a fundraising plan. So I hope that those help you out. I also have a newsletter for change makers and nonprofit and community and business leaders that you can subscribe to. I'll leave the link below the video and you can opt out anytime. But I send out resources relevant to um, social impact and nonprofit trends and opportunities opportunities and resources as well. Finally, I have a group on Facebook called Change the World or Bust. We've got 4,000 people from all over the world and they're sharing what good they are creating in the world and we'd love to have you there. So come on and join us. Once again, I'm Amber Melanie Smith and I hope that you found this helpful and thanks for wanting to do some good in the world. See you next time. Bye.